Welcome to Men and Snacks. Sorry, tools and track. So let's say I could sit in this, which I can, and let's say I could fit and I was having fun and pretending I was driving fast. I could change gears, but I couldn't steer. And more importantly, my feet have nowhere to go. So what are we doing about this? Today, we're putting more stuff in to make sure he can drive my car. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to make this car completely inaccessible for mechanical holder. Not by putting the seats on it? Well, we've done that, but I want to be absolutely sure, right? So what what this is, is the MX-5 pedal box. You'll remember this from, oh, knows, many moons ago. In fact, see what I think about it? Did we actually film taking the pedal box out of the MX-5? We didn't film much other than me getting a lot. sexually aroused with an air-powered buzz gun. <sighs> But this is the pedal box guys, right? So this is the original. I kept this because I thought, this might work. We don't know. Don't bin something you don't know you won't, maybe not need. Ugh. Use words. I know. Is this, are these pubes? I don't know. So that's your accelerator, as you can see, with its wee spring. And this attaches to a yeah. throttle cable. Me yeah. fly by wire in this car. I definitely wouldn't have been the new one. Anyway, yeah. that's your brake. Uh, master cylinder deleted. So the do all cars have a spring like this that supports yes, the brake pedal? Yes, Because do. I figured it just came back up with it. No. Wait, it's on my car. No, yeah, so it's central spring, spring operated. Uh, same goes for the clutch. There's your spring in there. So what happens if the spring isn't there? Will the clutch just uh, stay the best? Yeah. Why? Um, no amount of drugs will bring it back to happy oh, health. <laughs> This is an option for us to use, and what I'm going to do is demonstrate whether we will or not. Right now. So with the best will in the world, I mean, we'll have the scope to put this up above that if we wanted to. So if we went from there, no. It's Why not? So if you take a look here, this is where my master cylinder assembly will have to live for the brake, right? So even at its very highest point, it would sit here, and I could get away with that. But the problem is, if I ever want to be able to brake, I would need to have another half a foot underneath the floor ah. of the car for my feet to actually work the pedals. Uh, we can't go short in the pedal length, otherwise the car becomes undrivable. So this isn't going to work. We've got options with regards to how we can do pedals. Now, anyone who's looked at any Instagram with the car, you'll be able to see... Ba -ba -ba <laughs> you'll see all sorts of fancy, lovely goodness with uh, pressed aluminium... Uh, pedal boxes. Now these are great and they would work really well. However, there's a couple of reasons I'm not going to go near them. First of all, most of them run a dual bias front and rear brake master cylinder. Not going to pass an IVA. They don't let you have adjustable brake bias for obvious safety reasons. You must have a fixed brake force front and rear so that no numbskull driving the car, which is really what the IVA is all about, can't go and mess things up. That kind of rules out a lot of the pedal boxes I've been looking at. So our other option is if we go to the book, which is in the bin. Uh, no, it's not in the bin, but it's not here right now because this is not applicable in this circumstance. The book does tell you how to make a pedal box in a very rudimentary way. It involves a lot of fabrication, but it will also use the master cylinder and assembly for an Escort or Sierra or whatever. So even if I do that, I'm going to be modifying. However, Commoner Garden auction site to the rescue. You read my mind. I was just thinking about dinner. I was in the mood for something precision cut that I could consume and enjoy. However, it's not pizza. No, this, it's not. What is this? <laughs> this is a, 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 a laser cut MX-5 pedal box specific for a Keterum. The things you can find online. Uh, and it also wasn't even particularly expensive. Certainly when you consider your 300 quid odd for a universal generic pedal box, this was, I would say, a fifth of that. Bargain? Absolutely. So what it comes with is the plate assembly to mount all your master cylinders to. There's a bit of jiggery pokery obviously for mounting that onto the frame. <coughs> You've got your three pedals. <laughs> you are joking. No, I am not. Don't worry, we'll, we'll prettify that up. Pedal legs, as you can see. Three bushes and bush holders for them to pivot on. And then all the bracketry to attach them from that to that. Wow. Yeah. If you'd asked me what this was actually for, I would have suggested probably some kind of medieval persuasion device. Ikea pedal box, some assembly might be required. This is the bin of garbage from fabricating and disassembling the MX-5. Uh, yeah, there's just there's everywhere. There's a, a slam panel from the Audi that shall never be named over there somewhere. Oh, now that you say about the slam panel from the Audi, there's a Aye. job you could do. Aye, we, we did so, well with that. You might have, might have seen this slam panel from many, many episodes just lying in the background and wonder, surely to Christ it would have sold it or binned it by now. Well, I tell you, there's a reason we've kept it. And the reason is... 
nothing exciting. I'm going to rip the fans out and use it for the low cost. But in the interest of saving space, if we took the fans out, we could probably bend this lamp panel. So there's wow. a task. There's, yeah, there's a, a task, task indeed. Indeed. That's a bit of that, my boy. Yep. This guy is just happy to see you, but that one wants your autograph because that is your biggest fan. Ho ho ho! Can we just take a moment? This yep. is the third time, I think maybe even the fourth time, that that has appeared on camera. And we need to just point out that it still works. I know. It was $69.99, including a 4 amp battery. It works. 400 newton meters is a wee bit optimistic. I don't think it's quite producing that. Mm. It takes wheel nuts off. Maybe on a full charge with a wind behind it downhill, it probably could. Aye, aye, at like sea level. I would suspect that this is probably going to be the one that I'm going to need. But if you can give me all the loom, all the plugs, um, anything that's a fan, and we'll just ditch the rest. Right, I reckon we're taking out this guy, and hopefully then, as you said, the whole thing right, just clips in. Talks. Yep. that came out. Uh, that was maybe one day of Tox, but now is... Now it's going to be a flathead. I reckon oh. it's going to be an 8mm drill. Wow, I'm on the Germans. I would put some slack in the one. Look at that! There we go mate. You hired. That was easy. Look at the wee balance weight. That's quite clever. Look. Oh aye. It's a German's man. Yeah, you're very Germanic. They do things properly. I might buy a German car next. Mm. There we go. Here's your fans. Lovely. Get this to Yeah. <sighs> Remember, boys and girls, it's always a wise move to... Bye Felicia. <sighs> Responsibly dispose of your That is going to the skip. <laughs> as far as I can make out, it's already there. <laughs> so I've got to be honest, this pedal box is a bit of a mystery to me. It's just come in a flat box. There's no instructions, nothing at all. And just a whole load of laser cut parts. Now there is a few engineering principles and tips of the trade that I can let you into that make this process a lot easier when you don't have instructions. First one, go back onto the advert and have a look at the picture. That'll give you some clues. So looking at the picture, it's clear that these three long flat cutouts that I've got are to be welded together to mesh around the inch by inch box section at the very front of the driver's feet. We can do this without affecting anything else because these panels are all the same length. So as long as they're welded in correctly and flush, that's our first stage done. discussion about bushes. This has been supplied with three bushes and three bush insert steel tubes. All right. Now looking at them, they are pretty basic plastic things and these tubes are all right. The bowls are the same size but the problem with the tube is you've got this little steel flare line within it where it's been joined. I don't like the idea of brutalizing this just to get it in that tube. So as a result, we are going to flatten this down a wee bit, make it a bit neater. As usual, all about the jig work in this guy. So once again, we've made ourselves a temporary jig. The reason for this is that I'm welding on to the bush mounts, the pedal legs, and they have to be perfectly straight. They also have to be bang on in the middle, otherwise the spacing is going to be off for your pedals. This will be a bigger problem later on once we get the bracketries on to hold it to the actual box. But this all has to be really accurate because believe it or not, you would imagine you know, your feet won't really notice as much as your hands. But if you're actually on the racetrack and pedals are out, you're really going to notice it. So this has to be bang on. So what I've done is I've positioned the arm here, bang set in the middle of where this bush holder is going to be. And then I've assembled this. Now what this is, datum here to make sure that the bush sits perfectly parallel and level. And then another clamped onto the top, which gives me the jiggle to make sure that it's sitting perfectly 90 degrees. And I've measured that here. So everything's at 90 degrees and we're ready to go. I'm gonna throw a couple of spot welds on each side. And then we're gonna take it off and see and weld the whole bad boy. Exciting. Much excite.
Right, that's the bare bones of the pedal box assembled. Now we need to look at what we need to take from the old pedal box to make the new pedal box work. Starting with this. This is the old clutch pedal assembly from the MX-5. This seems to be separate from the brake and the accelerator for reasons that only Mazda will know. So what we need to do is establish what needs to come off of this to work on the new one. Obviously the master cylinder has been removed, but actually the only thing that needs to come off of this is that cleavage pin and a plunger to activate the old master cylinder. Yeet! I'll clean that up there. Next up, we need to look at how the master cylinder will actually attach. And understandably, because it's me, there's going to be some problems with it. Namely, it actually sits too far in, and the bolt holes are completely different from where they need to be. So, what we're going to do is make a standoff adapter plate for it that will actually sit it in the correct position so the plunger has a full range of travel once it's all connected. That's going to be a pretty simple thing to do. We're just going to get some steel, chop it down to size, put it in place, and bridge the gaps. Ooh. The accelerator pedal is both simple and complicated as well. So, the simple part is, we were supplied with a round hole here, which won't work because the cable that goes through is a square connector. So, simple solution to that, get a file out and make it square. That's sorted, the cable now fits. The next thing we need to look at with the accelerator cable is, well, how the cable attaches to it. Let me show you. This is the pedal attached. Now, as you will see, it has a hole sitting at 90 degrees from where the hole goes through here. It lines up and it looks okay. The problem is the cable that comes through, well, it needs this in order for it to pull. Unfortunately, the hole that I have doesn't align with that and doesn't make sense with that. And I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we could put something like this clevis pin assembly on around here so that when it goes back and forward it will pull on the cable. Now that should work, but the problem is I would still need to get the cable through that hole, so that means cutting a notch in it here, and worse off, well, that's off the brake master cylinder. Am I making another bracket here? I'm, I'm making another bracket here, aren't I? <sighs> Make another bracket. Fine. There's obviously going to have to be some grey pokery involved with that. So, before I get all creative and then forget to tell you all what I've just done, as I always do, let's take some measurements and I'll explain roughly what's going to happen here. So, our fulcrum point, which is from this to here, has to remain the same. 41? 41 millimetre. Whatever we do to rotate that, it must maintain 41 millimetre. Cool. That's one of the rules, that should be a bloody doddle. The brake master cylinder, I think, is probably going to be the trickiest out of the three. This is my ABS compliant brake master cylinder. Now there's a whole lot of gubbins on here which will come to way down the line when we're actually hooking up the brakes. But it's a dual circuit, we'll add some valves and f*** it later on. So, in order for this to fit into here, it would simply go through the hole. But it doesn't. Remember, remember like 10 minutes ago or so, when I said this is for an MX-5? I've got a feeling that this might be a slightly different design because it's for ABS. If I widen this hole out, it should still fit in here okay. And the next problem I'm going to have is a plunger. Why am I going to have a problem with the plunger? Well, the original plunger is attached to this servo unit. The problem is, 
that is an integral part of that, and that, with the plunger in there, is what would normally act on the master cylinder. What I will need to do is get my brake pedal installed and then see where this master cylinder is going to act on it. That plunger will basically act all the way into the face of this. So, when we attach it, it will need to act into the face of that as well. Would I be better buying a f***ing non-ABS master cylinder? If you're looking for a Mark II MX-5 master cylinder and you happen to be a Patreon or if you're not a Patreon or whatever, go on eBay or find a different one because I'm about to murder this. Last job is getting the actual foot pedal part onto the pedal lever. The kit supplies these flat plates and you'll see here this isn't flat. So in order to get that on we're going to have to do a bit of profiling. As luck would have it there's a simple way to do it. Trust me this is empty. Once you've got your profile shape, or in this instance, way beyond it, put it back in the vise and straighten it out until it's exactly correct. Voila! They look the part, don't they? Not bad for a little eBay jigsaw. I reckon that'll get us right the way through the IVA and more. That has went surprisingly well. Be aware, you're probably going to have to modify it depending on what generation of MX-5 you went with for a donor. But it does fit and it does work. There are meant to be stops on these that will stop the pedals moving around. Replicates the way it should be in the book, but I don't think it looks very neat. So I think we're going to come up with something a bit more tricky. So, in future episodes, we'll be doing more things like this. Pretty much from scratch, hopefully, wherever possible. And trying to see if we can bring any new tricks to an old design of car. All our Patreons, we appreciate the support. Anyone who's not joined Patreon, we would certainly appreciate that support as well. The link's in the description below. Have a look. Obviously, do the like, do the subscribe, hit the bell, all that YouTube nonsense that I'm sure by now you've already done. All that remains to say is, I will see you in the next episode. And, uh... Thanks for watching. See you later, guys. Ooh. 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 So, uh, now that I've made a match, yeah, I could go on. To, <clears throat> I could go on to eBay or any other. What did I have for lunch? I can't remember.